Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I just want to show you how you can install LaTeX Workshop inside Visual Studio Code on a Windows machine. I will show you all the steps that you will need to take, uh, what you need to install, for instance, how to install VS Code, how to install MicText, and how to install Perl on Windows. So I will take you through all the steps so you can just follow along and watch these tutorials, and then you're going to be able to compile a LaTeX document inside VS Code on your Windows machine. What you're going to get is what you can see here on the screen. With the LaTeX Workshop extension inside VS Code, you're going to be able to edit your LaTeX source file, and you're going to be able to see the changes reflected in real time here on your screen in the PDF. Let me change the title. So from my paper, I, I can say YouTube example. As I, change, as I save my document with Control Save, we can see this build icon appearing here at the bottom, and we can see the changes reflected in real time here on the screen. I think this is a fantastic feature that you're going to get enabled by default if you're using this extension. And I put together this video because I know that many of you are using VS Code to compile your Python code or to, um, or to write code in general. So I think you will greatly benefit from uh, learning how to use this extension. If you want, I have also a video on how to install a latex compiler inside PyCharm. PyCharm is my preferred IDE, so I generally use PyCharm to edit my Python code, my JavaScript code, and so forth, and I think it is fantastic. But equally good is this extension, so I just wanted to put together this tutorial so you can also choose which one to use. If you want to find out how to use Textify inside PyCharm, you can click on the card that will appear on the top right of your screen, so it will appear here on the top right of this video. So now that you know, what you can do with the LaTeX Workshop extension. I'm going to show you all the steps that you need to take in order to install it on your Windows machine. This tutorial is not going to be a detailed tutorial on how to use LaTeX. I've already like more than 30 videos on that, so check my YouTube channel and check my YouTube LaTeX playlist, and you're going to find a lot of useful video on how to edit figures, tables, paragraph, output notes, bibliography, and so forth. This video is just about how to set up LaTeX Workshop on your Windows machine. Before we start, I would like to take a second to remind you that if you like this type of video, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. It's free and it's just, you just have to do a click down under the video. And this is, helps me a lot and helps with the YouTube algorithm. And also, if you want, you can support my channel by buying me a coffee, supporting me on Patreon or joining here my channel on YouTube. So let's get started with the installation. On this window machine, I don't have any software installer required to run LaTeX Workshop inside VS Code. I don't even have VS Code installed on my computer. So let's start by installing VS Code. So we can do a quick Google search here inside our browser, and then we can click on Download, and we're going to download it for Windows. I have Windows 64-bit, so I'm going to just download the 64-bit installer, so just from here. And then this is downloading uh, VS Code on my computer, 64-bit, so I can just click on Save, and then I can double-click here, and this is going to install VS Code for me. I'm going to have to go through the steps, so I will just take you so through all the steps, so I accept the agreement, so just Next. I'm going to have to define where VS Code is going to be installed, so I press Next, and then this is uh, uh, the link in the Start menu, so I don't, I'm, I'm happy with this one, so I can click on Next. And then here is going to ask me a couple of other things, which is going to say add to path, require share restart. We are not going to need to do that. We are not going to need to restart the computer in this case. And then we don't want to add a desktop, desktop icon. So I can click on next, and then I'm going to click on install. While it is installing, we can go here in the browser again, and we can also install MIC text. So I prefer to use MIC text because it's a lighter installation package than text live. So on LaTeX Workshop, they suggest you to use TextLive. I think it's very heavy, and it takes a very long time to install. So I prefer to use MicText, and I didn't have any issues with it. So that's my preferred option. So one downside to use MicText to compile your LaTeX document inside VS Code is that you will also have to install Perl. And I will show you in a second how to install Perl. So we can go here, MicText, and then we can go in Downloads. And then we can select Windows, and then we can download this file. As you can see, it's only 128 megabytes. And then we're going to set it up, so it's going to install packages on the fly. So as we need the latex packages, MicText is going to install them for us on our computer. So let's go back to VS Code, and we're going to say launch VS Code. So here VS Code is asking me to create the initial setup of the project. I don't really care about this for this example. So I'm just going to select the dark, and let me actually go and start opening a project. So here I can go File, Open Folder, and then I can navigate to the desktop of my computer. So here a desktop, and I have a YouTube example LaTeX project. So let me open this folder here, and we're going to see the files that we have. And I have to say, yes, trust the author of this file. 
So let me close this uh, issue with Git, uh, which is not important at the moment. Uh, or uh, yeah, so we can close that. And inside here, we can see that we have our main.x file here. Then we have our sample bib, which contains the, uh, the references for our article. And then we have the image, frog.jpg, and we also have an image inside figures, which is my preferred option. So I like to put figures uh, inside a figure folder here, because then it's going to be easier to maintain them organized. So if I go to the main.x file, as you can see, VS Code is reading this file as a text file. However, we can click here on Search Marketplace to look for extension. So we can either click here, or we can look here at extension. So here on the side, you have this symbol here, and you can click here or there in the Marketplace to search for extension. So let's actually click here, because I already showed you how to open the extension here from the side. So let's click here and see what VS Code is actually suggesting us. Our preferred option in this case is to download LaTeX Workshop. So we click here, LaTeX Workshop, and then we're going to install it on our machine. As you can see, later Workshop has already been downloaded more than a million point five times, and there is a very nice community behind, so there are a lot of tutorials and a lot of examples. Therefore, you can trust this, this extension. So now that we go back to the main.txt file, as you can see, the look of the file has also changed, because later Workshop has recognized that this is a text file, and in this case, we can actually open it as a LaTeX document, and technically, we can compile it. As you can see now here, we also this uh, icon here has appeared, which is called text here. So we can click here, and we can try to build the LaTeX project. Of course, we're going to get uh, an error at the moment. We're going to get an error because we don't have neither Perl installed on our computer, nor we have MK text. So let's go back to our browser here, getting MK text. So we can go here into Downloads, and we can install MK text. So this is the first step. So I accept the MK text copyright condition, then press, click on Next. And then you have to find the folder where you want to install MK text. So you can click on Next. Then you have to select a couple of settings. So prefer paper size, so A4, and install missing packages on the fly. This is, I think, is very nice on MK text. So we can say yes. So this is going to install the packages when required. Then we click Next, and then we're going to click on Start. This is going to start the installation. The final thing that we need to do is to install Perl. So we can learn Perl and then Strawberry Perl here. So we can look for Strawberry Perl, and we can download the 64-bit um, version. So I'm going to download this one. I'm going to download it here in the download folder. So I'll click on Save. And in the meantime, we can check the installation of MKText. Then, then when, when this is finished, we're going to install Strawberry Perl on our computer. And then we should be able to compile our LaTeX document inside VS Code using LaTeX Workshop extension. So the installer is showing us the installation has almost finished, so we can click on Next. We can click on Check for Updates Now, and then we can click on Close. And we are not going to donate this time to the project, so we're just going to click on Close. And then here, we can look for MicText Console, it's telling us that a setup issue has been detected, and we haven't checked for updates. So let's click on Check for Updates. If you're going to get an error, don't worry too much, because sometimes with uh, MicText can happen. You may get this error, but we should be able to compile our document anyway. And I'm going to test this with you, so don't worry about it. If you're going to face any issues, uh, we're going to fix them as we go. So now that we have checked for updates, we can go here in Updates, and then we can click on Update Now. This is going to update the packages, which is a bit strange because we just uh, installed them right now. But don't worry, we just have to update them, and this is going to take a little bit of time. We just have to wait that it updates, and as you can see, it's quite fast. Great, this has installed all our packages, so we can click here. The MicText console can be closed. So this is going to open uh, this uh, command line prompt. We just have to wait that it goes away. Perfect, that's done. Also, so now we are done with the, the VS Code installation. We are done with the MicText installation. We have already downloaded Perl, so we can again go here into Downloads, install Perl on our computer. So this has opened this installer, so we can go Next, I accept the terms uh, of the license agreement, Next. So we just have to define where we want to install uh, uh, Strawberry Perl. So we can keep the default C.-Strawberry, uh, and then we can click on Next, and then we're going to install it on our computer. And this is going to install uh, Strawberry Perl. It should be fairly quick, and it shouldn't take much time, and then we should be ready. And then once this is done, we can go and uh, close VS Code, reopen it again, and then we should be able to compile our LaTeX document inside the VS Code using the LaTeX Workshop extension. So while this is getting ready, let me actually close VS Code. We can close the web browser because we don't need it anymore.
Perfect, the installation was completed. So now we can click here on Windows and then we can search for VS Code. And then we open here VS Code. And this time we should be able to compile the document because we have Perl, MIG text, and we also have a VS, a VS Code LaTeX Workshop extension installed on our computer. So let me update Git here. And I'm just going to put this one down so we don't get a error message. Don't worry about that because Git, we are not going to need Git in this video here. So here we can click here, build LaTeX project. And as you can see, we are no longer getting errors this time because we have installed all the required files. We didn't have to add any software or any program to the uh, environmental path in window because we had to do that when we installed MIG text on Mac. On Mac, we didn't need to install Perl because it was already installed inside Mac. But here, on the other end, we had to install Perl, but we don't have to add MIG text to the system path. So the first time that we are building this project, it might take a little bit of time. The reason why it's taking a little bit longer this time is because we are installing all the packages on the fly. The second time you compile the same document is going to be much quicker because you have already installed all the packages with MIG text. Okay? So we just have to wait for a little while and that is compiling and is installing. So as you can see here at the bottom, it's also telling us that it's building and we just have to wait for a little bit, uh, for a little bit of time that this is done. And you can go back if you click here on build and this open this uh, like, uh, page here, which you can configure different recipes. So you can configure how to compile your latest document. But if you want to go back to the Explorer, you can always click here at the top. Now that you, you can see that the build was completed. So receipt uh, su succeeded. So we have a tick here at the bottom, but also the other thing that we can see that it has worked is because we can see the PDF here. So if I click here, I can now see the PDF that this has compiled our document. So here another thing that is asking us is how we want to display the PDF inside VS Code. I'm going to click on Keep LaTeX Workshop Internal PDF Viewer. However, you may want to, you may change that if you, if you prefer to use a different way of visualizing your PDF. Then you can drag this tab here on the right. So we're going to have our PDF here on the right and we are going to have our source code here on the left. As I showed you before, here in the title, you can change the title and you can say my paper and then you can press on Control Save. This is going to save the project, it's going to build automatically the project and it's going to update the PDF for you, which is a fantastic functionality of this extension because we can just write our paper and while we write our paper, then we can see the changes reflected directly into our PDF. And uh, as I change that, you can of course change many other things. For instance, you can change uh, this uh, image here, or you can change whatever you want, and all the changes will be reflected in uh, your uh, paper. So for instance, let me actually show you how you can change the figure, but this is going to be the last thing. So we can say frog.jpg, and then we can press Control Save. This is going to compile the document again, as you can see the build here, and then we should be able to see the image reflected here in our, PD in our PDF, in our latest document. I really hope you find this video interesting. If you did, please consider liking my video and subscribing to my channel. It really helps and this is a great way to let me know that you like the content of this video, which gives me motivation to release more videos like this one. If you would like me to create uh, similar videos or a more in-detail video on how to use LaTeX Workshop, please feel free to write a comment down in the comment section below or the relevant link are down in the video description. If you want to support my channel, you can also consider buying me a coffee or supporting me here on YouTube by clicking the join button or alternatively you can support me on Patreon. I have a lot of other LaTeX video that you might find useful. I will put a card at the end of the video so you will see a card and you can click on that and you can see the playlist and you might find a lot of other interesting video about LaTeX and I hope you will find them useful. Thank you very much for listening and see you in the next video.